Zoom are recording. There we go. Well, good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us uh, for our first faculty expert panel discussion and live meeting presentation. We had uh, over 20 students that RSVP to this, so as I mentioned earlier, if you just signed on, I mentioned that to reduce background noise, we are asking everyone to mute their line by pressing star six, and then at the end of the call, we will entertain some questions should we not address those questions. And then the other uh, piece to this is if uh, you're on the line and you plan to log into live meeting later, if you could just be sure to mute your speakers uh, because you might get some amplification from the computer, audio, and your phone. So the purpose of the presentation is really to answer some common questions you have about the vouchers of healthcare management. And it's an opportunity for you to also um, hear from our experts who have uh, worked in healthcare administration and cover a variety of settings. So uh, we noticed, I noticed as the program director that we had quite a few questions from brand new students and then we still have some that have been in our program for a while that would also like to um, gain some insights from those who have been working in the field. So this presentation serves those purposes. And what I'd like to do is for us to really go through the presentation um, with minimal, if, if any, interruptions. And then I think it will just be more efficient that way. But if you do have a question about anything that we're discussing, if you'll write it down. And then we have, as I mentioned, we have time at the end to address those questions. So without further ado, what I would like to do now is to uh, introduce our panel. And for those of you who have been in the program, you probably know me because I've been teaching, uh, I've taught Health 1000 and also Health 3115, Public and Global Health. But if this is your first time hearing my voice, then I just wanted to say um, it's very nice to uh, quotation meet you. And I hope that you'll reach out and send me an email later and let me know how you, um, how this uh, this presentation served you and, and what recommendations you have for later. So my background is actually in community health and health education, although I've been high, in higher education for over 17 years. By the way, my name is uh, Dr. Jody Early. <laughs> I'm also a certified health education specialist and have been involved with um, com actually creating online programs in the health sciences and really enjoy it and also enjoy working with adult learners who are uh, want to make, uh, want to, uh, you know, add to their education and um, perhaps even change career paths. So my, uh, my research interests are primarily health and technology, but also women's health. And then um, I have had experience with CBPR, which is community-based participatory research. And right now, I'm gravitating to um, photo voice and helping um, populations, especially uh, vulnerable populations, use digital technology um, as their voice to help improve their own health conditions. So, And then we are privileged to have uh, our next panelist is our, also our associate dean. Dr. York Westerman, and I'm going to let Dr. Westerman say a few words of introduction. Oh, thank you very much, Dr. Early. Really I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, my name is York Westerman. I'm the Associate Dean of the School of Health Sciences. Uh, yeah, as you might know, we have lots of uh, programs in our schools, so uh, we certainly hope, you know, that your involvement in the bachelor program is only a start of uh, a longer relationship with us. Uh, you know, we offer the MHA, for example, you know, uh, if you want to stay in that area, the Master of Health Administration, then, uh, then also PhD program in health services. So, uh, hopefully you will enjoy the experience and uh, we can, uh, you know, build a long time journey together. So, yeah, my background is actually in this area. Uh, I have a PhD in hospital administration or health management from the University of Iowa and also a master's degree in economics. Uh, as you probably can tell by now, uh, I'm not uh, 
to have, oops, I'm so sorry, is uh, Dr. Alan Whiteman, who is the program director for our Masters of Health Administration program, and I will let Dr. Whiteman share some words of introduction as well. Good evening. Thank you for joining us tonight and taking time for your schedules, and I hope we can answer a lot of your questions. My background, I've got 43 years in the healthcare industry combined with about 18 years in higher education. Uh, I have uh, worked in hospitals, third-party payers with insurance plans, uh, medical group practices, and I've been a senior manager with one of the major CPA firms in consulting, and have been on the ground and owned a number of health care businesses of my own. I've been very active in the professional associations, particularly the uh, college medical practice executives, which is part of the Medical Group Management Association. I'm a life fellow in that organization. And uh, recently, prior to joining all I was an associate dean and program director at Barry University in Miami, Florida. My research interests are leadership models in medical group practices. I've worked with medical group practices where they join that arena, and it's a career field uh, that I had never heard of before. Also, I've been the same route that you're going academically. I started uh, with a brand new bachelor's in health, in health facilities management at Michigan State many years ago and was in a hotel school, switched into health administration because it looked interesting. It turned out to be an extremely good career path for me, and I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much, Dr. Whiteman. And we're also very lucky tonight to have with us Dr. Dr. Courtney Nieves, and I will let her also share some words of introduction. Hi, everybody, and uh, my name is Dr. Nieves. Thank you so much for having me, and I, I am really excited to be on, on this call. Um, I teach in the National Healthcare Management Program, as well as the MHA and the PhD in Health Services here at Walden. I have about uh, 10 years' experience in higher education teaching at various universities in the healthcare management and public health uh, program. And I also have done a lot of consulting work um, with some medical groups in the area where I live, which is in Dr. Florida. My research interests that are really more around um, emergency preparedness, bioterrorism preparedness, um, my dissertation was on that, and I've kind of tried to get into that research agenda uh, since graduating with my PhD. And very um, much all I have to add at this point, but I'm really excited to meet all of you and, and talk about some of the issues that interest you. Thank you so much, Dr. Nieves. And we also have with us tonight Dr. Carolyn Arnold. And Dr. Arnold, I will let you also share with um, our audience tonight a little bit about yourself and your rich experience. Okay. Uh, well, my name is Carolyn Arnold, and I'm actually a career academic. I've, uh, I started in the, in the uh, teaching business back in the 60s. I was still in the uh, one of the uh, students that's on the on the call, Ebony, that I actually started um, uh, my career in Washington D.C. and my first job was teaching at Howard University um, at the College of Medicine. And essentially, I've been teaching um, and doing all of the uh, uh, academic, uh, the the three stools of academia: teaching, research, and service for the last 40 plus years now. And um, I guess in that time, I taught practically um, every course or <laughs> conceivable course 
in public health and community, public and community health. Um, and I'm, I'm still doing that. I teach right now at the University of Massachusetts in Boston. And um, for the last, I guess, several years, uh, my teaching focus has really been uh, research. And um, we at the University of Massachusetts, we have a capstone. Um, and I've been supervising the capstone. Um, activity there. And uh, over the years, um, the, I've done research, uh, cancer research in epidemiology. I've done um, health services uh, evaluation and assessment. My, my practical experience has been in community health centers. And I have uh, worked as a uh, an evaluator and uh, uh, grants uh, the development person in, in community health centers. And so I have particular interest in um, that form of health care delivery. And uh, let's see what else. That's, I guess that's about it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Arnold. Uh -huh. I think we will go ahead and forge ahead with our presentation. And um, as I mentioned earlier in the call, we will be discussing uh, the Guild of Healthcare Management opportunities and why a bachelor's degree in healthcare management is a good idea. And um, what I wanted to do in, is explain also that um, we were able to look over the questions that many of you sent forward with your RSVP and compile a list of commonly asked questions. And so I wanted to start off with these three because Dr. Westerman in just a minute is going to provide an overview of the field and really answer some of these questions here. You know, where is the biggest job growth within the healthcare industry? What kinds of jobs can students who pursue a voucher's? Uh, in this area, uh, achieve even without a master's, and then uh, some of you wanted to know, once you graduate, where can you go to find a job in the field? So I'm going to turn the time now over to Dr. Dr. Westerman. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, you know, as you can see from the slide, you know, that we uh, put together here to give you an overall perspective of the field. Uh, yeah, health, uh, health industry is one of the uh, areas in our uh, economy that is estimated to just grow rapidly. You know, there are certainly lots of reasons for that, you know, aging uh, society and, and uh, all of that play a huge role in that, but uh, yeah, it's estimated, you know, over 20 percent growth rate. Uh, so that is, you know, much more than you find in a lot of other fields and uh, makes it uh, very attractive. And then also, you know, you might know that, you know, from, uh, uh, from, from looking at the overall economy uh, in the United States, healthcare is the biggest you know, lots of people are uh, employed in healthcare. Uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, also that uh, makes it clear that that's a good field to be in. And then, uh, yeah, as you also can see in the slide there, that over the past uh, five years, uh, you know, uh, a lot of new private sector jobs uh, came from healthcare, and uh, that field is just growing more than any other area. So, yeah, that's a good uh, field to be in. Yeah, and uh, as you see also here, you know, there are lots of uh, settings, uh, healthcare facility settings where uh, people can find employment. It's not only the traditional hospital. You know, that certainly is also, uh, it's absolutely a big uh, uh, employer. Uh, but there are lots of others too, nursing uh, and residential care facilities, physician offices, 
so much of what you learn, even at the bachelor's level, is transferable to, to other settings. So, um, you know, we, ha we have some great programs, and Dr. Whiteman is on the call. And if you've been thinking about perhaps pursuing the MHA, um, please um, take some time at the end. He's happy to answer some questions, or you can even email him directly. The next part of our presentation, um, what I've asked from our panel is to um, think about some of the some of your questions related to these topics. Things like we've already talked about the degree coursework and how that fits into preparing you for the field. And now we're going to talk about you know how do you market yourself, uh, networking, why is it important, gaining experience. And many of you have been working in the healthcare field, but some of you have not. And so some questions have been posed about how do you go about gaining experience that will set you up for after graduation um, to get you the job that you'd like. Um, we can also talk about the optional field experience or service learning project, which I can talk about toward the end. Um, and, and our panelists will all weigh in on these things. And then also um, being active in professional organizations, attending conferences, even as a student at the bachelor's level, this is of, uh, I highly recommend, not only do you get the student rate, but you also, in terms of networking and getting to know people, this is a valuable piece of that. It also helps you stay abreast of what is going on in the field. And as Dr. Westerman mentioned, um, I love the fact that our, our that Walden really does um, reach out and, and makes the table a very big table in terms of who gets to weigh in on the content and um, does it is it current. And so having you know inside. Um, respected experts like the ones that are called tonight, as well as reaching out to others in the field, um, you can be, you know, assured that our curriculum is really keeping up to speed with what is was going on in the field. And you'll see that as well just in the conferences and professional organizations. So if you can't attend a conference at the national level, there are also uh, state-level, you know, chapters of those organizations, and that might be a very easy and inexpensive way for you to get involved with that. And so I'm going to turn this time over to Dr. Whiteman, who um, is going to spend some time and give you some advice on how to market yourself even at the bachelor's level and set you up for your, your next career position. I, uh, let me let me start out and talk about uh, some of the perfect career development opportunities. Um, as Dr. Early just said, it's very important for you to get involved. Uh, joining into professional associations, particularly I've been very active in professional associations my entire career, and they really are a tremendous opportunity. They really are a career jumpstart. The, if you know the arena and the area that you really want to specialize in, then you can go find a specialty organization. For those of you that are just trying to enter the industry and you're not quite sure which way you want to go or you'd like to explore some opportunities, the American College of Healthcare Executives is a great host association, and they're a national group of about somewhere around 30,000 members that it's a big you become a fellow in the organization over time as you grow in the industry and you know, you advance your education and everything. And that's a recognized credential in the field. Also, you know, that focuses primarily in the hospital arena and the bigger organizations. The other organization that works real well is the Medical Group Management Association, which also has the American College of Medical Practice Executives, which gives you another professional credentialing opportunity. And then the American Public Health Association has a health administration, health management section, and that's really geared for individuals working in the arena of healthcare management in public health settings because there's tremendous growth and opportunity in that arena. I, I'm very big on participating in professional conferences and in networking events. And if I could stress this, it's, it, it's, it's a great way to get started. And for example, I'm in South Florida, and the American College of Healthcare said the executives at the ACG and also the Medical Group Management Association, we have local chapters. We welcome 
of students to attend these chapter functions, and we don't charge any fees for students to come, and we, and we encourage them to come and participate. And what we've done with our local chapter, particularly the American College Healthcare Executives, for about the last eight or nine years, we've had a multi-university case study competition, both at the bachelor's and the master's level. And there's, there's prize money awarded to win. The students have a lot of fun with it. Totally student, students develop a case study. They result, they work on a problem that's given to them. And we have a panel of five to seven hospital executives that come in and actually listen to the presentations and give the awards and everything. So it, it's a nice experience. And when you attend these functions, try to meet people. Walk around, introduce yourself. And the suggestion I'll make to you, if you don't have business cards, buy some card blanks at Office Max, Office Depot or Staples, and take and print a business card for yourself. It's nothing more than your email address, your cell phone, and your name. Because if you're walking around the conference or you're walking around some networking event, you'll meet a lot of people. And somebody may just say, you know, I really like that gentleman or that young lady I met at the, at the event last night. And I can't remember their name, but maybe they have a card there, and they remember you handing them the card. And I, I've had students who have been able to develop internship opportunities and job opportunities by, by doing that persistently, going to these events and letting people know they're out there. It's also a great opportunity when you're networking to explore career opportunities. So this gives you a chance to meet a hospital administrator, or a medical group practice executive, somebody from the banking industry, and just talk to them about jobs, what you're interested in, and you know, work from somebody that's working in the field, but you know about that. Now, if you don't have a lot of experience in the industry, the, the way to gain some more experience is to take care of, is take advantage of the practical experiences that that appear both in the in the bachelor's program, I believe, and we have it in the master's also. We can actually go out and get some experience working in an organization. I, I've had over the years a number of students have, have done this, and it's been a very good experience. And if, if you do that, it gets you somebody that can give you a reference. The other thing you can do also is to volunteer some time. Find an organization and see if, if they'd be happy to have you come in as a volunteer and learn about how the organization functions. Physician medical students do this all the time. People thinking about going into medicine, they're actually required to go out and shadow somebody around for, for a day and learn about, you know, what it takes to be a doctor. So I, I would believe that if you call those hospitals, um, executives are very happy to work with you and get you, you know, and help you. And if you're interested in pursuing this, Dr. Early is the best person to talk to and she can help you. But the best formula for building a career is to finish your bachelor's degree. And we hope that this is a great enough experience, you know, working with Dr. Early through the program and a really good faculty you have that I'll get to see in the master's program when you graduate. Is that really, for those of you that want to move up the career ladder, that's really the next step for you. Thank you very much, Dr. Whiteman. Um, and with, with all of these things in mind, um, I'd like to just share with you some of the other questions that students pose that really relate to what we've been discussing um, on a more, a more specific question. For those of you who have been working in healthcare, um, someone posed the question, how do you transition from a clinical role into one that's more business or administrative? Um, and then the rest of the questions you can see there, how do you go about applying for a job without any real experience? And then the best advice or insight someone has ever given you about this field. And I'd like to, to open this up to our panel and let, um, first I'm going to start with uh, Dr. Nieves and then go to Dr. Arnold, and then we'll have Dr. Whiteman and Dr. Um, Westerman um, you know, add their insight as well. Dr. Nieves, would you like to, to share some thoughts either about marketing themselves, um, opportunities, but also hear anything specific to the content on this slide? Oh, thanks. thanks, Dr. Early. Um, one of the things that I kind of want to take you back off of, of what Dr. Weber was talking about is really the importance of having experience if you can get it. And I know that a lot of you may already be in the field, which is wonderful, and have that experience. So once you have that degree, you'll be able to marry the two together, and, and it's really a wonderful combination. 
information. Um, but for those of you who are not working in the field yet, uh, there are some opportunities for you still to gain that experience while you're going through your program. One of the best ways that I've seen um, students going through that test is to try and get into more of an internship role, or if you don't have a formal internship that you can secure, don't be afraid to go out and volunteer. Offer your services to uh, physician practice, or go to the hospital and try and, and to try and get some volunteer work in. Anything that you really can, can, can do, get your hands on some experience that when you get out, you can say, okay, I have the bachelor's degree, or I have the master's degree, however far you decide you want, are willing to go. But I also have some experience that I've up with and, and really put into practice what I've been able to learn in the classroom. And I honestly, I, I can't tell you how many students I've worked with that when they do these internships, they'll go ahead and volunteer. They have impressed the people that they work with so much that they have often been offered jobs as a result of that. So it's a wonderful way not only to network and to get experience, but maybe hopefully even to um, really put yourself in a position where it could become more of a full-time opportunity for you, or at least get you some entry-level positions in the business organization where you can really show them what you know and what's going on. Dr. Nieves, I this is Dr. Early, and I just wanted to j just take the time since you um, made such a compelling case to offer an example to those on the call that I once had a student who um, was nearing graduation. She was working on her portfolio um, in this particular program in community health. We had a portfolio, and um, she was trying to gain some field experience, and so. I have the op option in my course to do a serving a service learning project, which is very much tied to what we've been talking about volunteering. And in this particular course, it was health communications. So she went to a nonprofit organization um, that she had known about just from friends and had talked to them about the things that she was learning in the course and some of the things that she might be able to help with. And they actually gave her, charged her with coming out with a brochure. And then this was a few years ago before, you know, social media really became popular. But so she she designed the brochure as part of the course. Well, what happened, and I found out later about this, was that people at the national office actually liked her um, brochure so much that they ended up publishing it as part of the nonprofit at the national level. And then when she graduated, she was actually given a job to be part of their health education group to design health materials. So th I think that's just such an important point to emphasize is that volunteer work can, um, for many of you who have busy schedules, and even for those of you who are working already in the field, you may not desire that internship, but, my, but I think volunteerism can very much work in your favor. And a lot of times the organizations may not have um, the staff to oversee interns, but on a volunteer basis, it becomes much different. So I just wanted to interject that as an example. Absolutely. And, and really, I know that a lot of you probably have an enormous amount of activities on your plate, probably balancing school and work and family life and trying to have some sort of social life to kind of unwind as well. So it, it's really important that volunteering, it, it, it's really what you make of it. And if you have the time to put in, you know, 10 hours a week, 20 hours a week, that's wonderful. But even if you only have a couple hours a week to put in, it, it's really anything that you can do to really put yourself out there and gain that experience to get people to really notice you and see what you can do. It, it's really, I, I can't tell you how beneficial it is to you in the long run. And a lot of times you might even be able to really secure a position with them to volunteer with an agency or an organization in your area. For a lot of things you might be able to do at home and do kind of on your downtime. So it's not a huge time commitment where you might not have to be physically in that location, but you are able to make a shadow of somebody, get the experience, do some work at home, and really make it work for you. So there's a lot of opportunities out there. Just don't be afraid to go out and say, hey, you know what? I, I, I'm here. I'd like to learn. I'd like to volunteer my time. What can I help you with? And honestly, you never know what door that can open. Thank you, Dr. Nieves. And Dr. Arnold, did you want to weigh in on this as well? Um, uh, yeah, and all of the things, I, I concur with all of the things you said, uh, everyone has said, um, and how important it is to uh, put yourself in a position to network um, with other people. Um, most of the time, I, I, I venture to say uh, that people
people get jobs is really through their friends. And um, uh, we have all these, you know, fancy-dancy uh, social media uh, uh, devices and so forth nowadays, and those are all good. But usually people still get jobs. It's pretty much word, word of mouth. So that's why it's very important to meet people who get to, get to know people, um, that know you and know exactly, you know, the kind of thing that you're looking for or may not be looking for, that they may think that you may fit well into. Um, so, informal is uh, as important as, as, as formal. Great. Dr. Westerman, did you want to add a few words at all? about any of those um, questions posed on the slide or any thoughts that come to mind? No, not at this point. Okay. I want to give students a chance to ask questions uh, at the end, too. So okay. So, conscious Good. of the time. Good. There is, uh, it, 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 it's just one, one short thing I would like to say is that, and I, I guess it's the, the, the teacher, the professor in me, um, is that right now while you're in how important it is to develop um, a real knowledge base and a skill set because when you do whatever jobs you find yourself in, you're going to really have to have those basic foundational underpinnings of the field. And so this is the opportunity, the walls and experience, the education that we hope to provide to you is the is the time to really get a good grasp of um, the knowledge base and the skill set that, that you'll need. Um, I'm assuming that everybody is in health uh, services, is that right, uh, Dr. Early? Everybody on the call is these are all our students, is that right? They're all of our students, but some are within health studies with a concentration in health management. So Health management, uh-huh. Good, good. Yeah, so, so it's, it's very important that, you know, while you're uh, networking and, and trying to find jobs and, and, and even volunteer or internships or uh, whatever, um, to bring something, and I hate this expression, but I'm going to use it anyway, to bring something, to be able to bring something to the table so that when you find yourself out there, you can say, this is what I do. These are the skills that I have, and so forth. Great. Well, I think with Dr. Westerman's cue, what we will do next is I wanted to just end our presentation by talking about we've mentioned some of these associations um, earlier in our discussion, and this last slide actually um, lists those organizations and the websites. And so um, some of the, all of these really do provide um, more detail on the field as well as have job boards that you might be interested in looking at in terms of what positions are out there right now and the ones that you would, you know, which you, you would qualify for. What we'll do now for the, for the remainder of our call is open it up to questions. And I realize it can be difficult in a virtual environment where we're not seeing each other. But um, since our, I don't know how many others have joined us, but um, I think we'll be able to manage this in a pretty systematic way. But um, Ebony, let's start with you. Did you have any questions for our panel that we haven't been able to, that we haven't answered yet? Oh, and I forgot to mention, yeah. It's uh, pound six, I believe, to unmute. Ebony? Pound six.
How about Nancy? Okay. Well, anyone else out there that has a question for our panel? We put so much emphasis on muting our lines. I wonder if all of you are trying to talk right now, but you're muted. You're muted, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go back to that question just um, that someone had posed, and Dr. Whiteman, perhaps you can address this. For someone who is in more of a clinical role right now, um, what suggestions do you have? Should they, uh, you know, desire to move forward in more of an administrative role? That's a, and that's a really good question because we, over the years I've seen a number of students that are doing that that want to move on, from clinical into, you know, management. And what, one of the suggestions I have is obviously when you complete your degree, if you have a chance to do some of the practical training and practical internship would be very good, but also to look within your, your clinical profession at opportunities to advance into a management role, possibly within, let's say, your in physical therapy or occupational therapy or whatever the field is, but to move into maybe a supervisor capacity within that clinical area. And so you start to pick up some management responsibilities, get some training, learn budgeting, and a lot of the big you know, management skill sets that you really need some practical experience, and from that start to advance, you know, the full loop for other opportunities. So you've got your clinical base, now you've picked up some supervisory experience, and then to start to look, you know, within or outside your external of your organization for other opportunities you might move into. Great, great advice. Anyone else on the line with this that has a question? I also have. Nancy was on mute. Uh, I think Nancy was on mute. Nancy, are you there now? Unmuted. Uh, if you have a question, now would be a good chance to ask us. To unmute, you need to do. Count six. Hello? Hello? Yes, yeah. 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 I agree with Dr. Uh, Whiteman regarding coming from the clinical because that's what I did. I was in clinical and I'm in, um, now I'm in a supervisory role so I can learn the basics and the steps to get into the management of the budget and managing other steps um, one step at a time. So that is one of the steps that I'm taking at this time. Wonderful. Very good. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, and within the course that we're doing now, does it give us any managerial skills and how to deal with certain situations? Yes, Ebony, I don't know. Have you taken, well, some of our courses, uh, for example, the health organization and management, have you taken that one yet? No. Okay. Yes. The communication classes were great. As you get into the 4,000 level healthcare management courses, you will see, uh, for example, there is a course called Managing the Healthcare Workforce. Well, you're, you'll actually learn um, conflict management. You'll have some exercises and some case studies where you're, able, where you're able to weigh in on those things and actually apply what you've been reading. Um, you'll have another course uh, where you'll be able to go out and to interview someone working in the, um, specifically within uh, human resources within healthcare. So um, you, when you get to the 4,000, you're going to see some of these competencies that we've talked about. You're going to see them being addressed in those activities. You'll actually be, um, we call them applications, as you know. So actually be applying what you're reading, and you can take those with you into your work setting and really apply them. So. Oh, okay, good. Oh. So it comes up in the 400. Yeah, you'll see that directly in the 4,000 level courses. As you get deeper into the first course, the Health 4000 is the introduction to the field of healthcare management. So you'll talk about all of these specific areas okay. and skills. And then the rest of the remainder of the, of the program, you actually get to delve deeper 
into those areas, and many of the exercises deal with those with those um, you know concepts, but also skills. So you're sharpening your toolkit, and then in the capstone, you're actually going to be able to not only apply you know, within your capstone project, everything that you've learned, but you're going to be also working on marketing yourself. So it'll all come together in the end. Okay. Is that Carly? Yes. This is Nancy. Oh, yeah, thank you. Hi, Nancy. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll chime in later. Okay. Thank you. Hello. Nancy, did you have a question for our panel? Uh, well, I was just going to um, say thanks for the information about networking. I am going to go to office people and try to get a blank card if we don't mind information. I've been in healthcare for 25 years. I started for, for an admitting in emergency ultra management, but I only had an AA degree. So I wanted to do healthcare management for my BS, but I was advised to just go ahead and do health science, psychology, and um, human behavior, my um, bachelor of science, and then proceed with healthcare management for my master's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I've really gotten a lot of information from you guys, so that way it will be easy when I transition from my health, um, my PS degree into my master's degree. However, my thing is with so much experience and being, you know, in my early 40s, what are my chances now into getting another job? Panel. Nancy, yeah. Yeah, this is, you know, this is a wonderful, wonderful time to be in the health field and to be preparing, as you all are, for for professions and jobs in the field. This is, this is one of those rare uh, times in history where health care is, is, is being completely reinvented, as it were. And we're kind of at a, at a crossroads where people like you who've been in the field for a number of years and, you know, who are now preparing for the future uh, will be at a real advantage in this sense. Um, you'll have all of the, the, the knowledge that you've acquired over the, over the past 25 years to apply to whatever form our new health care uh, landscape will take. Yeah, yeah. That's Did true. I've been following, yes, I've been following Have that. Have you been it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I've been laid off for about seven months, so I'm glued on to the team, you know, <laughs> and I'm to the reform that's going on. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I have. You know, so, I'm hopeful, I'm hopeful, and of course, you know, Thank you, and, and it says uh, the formula is education plus experience. That's right. right. It's education plus experience plus education. Well, that's good. That's good. And, and, and mm -hmm. you'll be in an ideal position. You know, when I started out in this business, I think it was in 1960, whatever it was. But it was, when I started out, it was the, the old system was still in place. And then a couple of years after I actually, you know, started working, Medicare and Medicaid, several years later, came into yeah. being. Yeah. And yeah. that was That's the last time. <laughs> huh? Yeah. That's when I started Medicare and <laughs> yeah. and, and, and as you well know then, the whole system literally changed overnight. Yes, of course. Yeah, now we're doing it in 20 medical records now, too. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And so, and you know, I'm, I'm on the downside of this mountain now, but you're, you know, you're, you, you have um, a number of years ahead of you. But the advantage that you'll have is that you'll know the old system as well as, the, as learning now the new system. So you'll have a basis of comparison. And you'll have all of those dimensions of learning. You see what I mean? Yeah. yeah so so you're, you're, in you. you're in a good spot. You're in a good spot. Thank you very much. Yeah. There are jobs that we don't even know about. Yeah, I, I call them and I'm applying. I'm doing like 20, 30 a week, but I'm just like getting me. Well, well, here's what I mean. We don't know in 10 years what form the system is going to take. And so there will be their job.
folks out there that will be invented, created, that we, we can't even envision yet. But you'll be well prepared. And Thank you very much. I'm hopeful. Thank you. <laughs> and Nancy, one, this is Dr. Early. One thing I wanted to let you know about that you, you may not know about is our career services at Walden. Um, they can also help with your resume. Um, well, you'll have an opportunity in the capstone. We're going to be working on marketing yourself. But in the meantime, that is something that you may want to visit our Career Services Center just to get some pointers as you're applying. They can. Uh, I'll do that, yeah. I've done it once, but I'll try to go further and try to stay my race really mean try to. Uh-huh. That's, I'll do that. Thanks. Mm -hmm. early. No problem. Dr. Whiteman, I think you had some words of wisdom. Yeah, I just want to go back real quickly, Marty, you've got this slide on the screen. You had mentioned early about participating in professional associations, and I touched on it. But one of the things that may be interesting to the students, uh, American College of Healthcare Sec, the executives in the Medical Group Management Association, have an opportunity for students that are members of student members to go to the annual conferences, and they generally waive the registration fee, which is exceedingly expensive, and you just have to pay your own hotel and you know, housing and meals. But if you volunteer time, they will tend to let you go to those conferences in exchange for your time. Oh, great. Yeah. It's, it's a way of saving six or seven hundred dollars on a registration fee. Oh, okay. All right, that's good. That's good. Well, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Um, if there's anyone else on the call who would like to pose a question, we have Oh, about a minute left. Um, and if you, if we don't, if you're on the call and you're shy and you do have some questions and we didn't address those, feel free to send those to me directly at jody.early at waldenu.edu and we'll be sure to follow up with you. I want to thank our panel, uh, our distinguished panel tonight for taking of their time and imparting their wisdom and their experience with all of us. And uh, thank those that participated. You asked great questions. We appreciate you being here. And then those of you who are listening to this asynchronously, uh, again, I extend the same offer. If you have any questions um, or need some advice, please feel free to reach out. So thank you, everyone. I don't know if anyone from the panel wants to, has anything left to say, but I, I am going to um, end my thoughts right now. So anything else to add? All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Bye.